Thank you very much, JP. Uh, well, uh, as JP said, my name is Lawrence, uh, and welcome to making a benchmarking system for LLMs. So the first half is really going to be a little bit about, okay, how are we going to make the benchmarks? And the second part is really practical. Okay, which tools are we going to use, and uh, uh, how are we actually making it? So the why. Why do we want to benchmark LLMs? So um, maybe this is a very specific use case. Um, do, if you want to use LLMs, and I would say specifically if you uh, are a company or if you are working for the Dutch government, it would be nice if you uh, know... Oh, oh, oh. I need to a little bit... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now I'm just going to tell it by myself. So um, it would be nice if you know which LLM to use, because there are so many. You can use the, the, the chat TBTs of the world. You can use your own uh, ones that you host locally. But yeah, I cannot really compare them. Maybe they just talk nice to me back, but it's not really something tangible that you can uh, uh, reach from it. And specifically, if you're uh, a governmental organization, you want to be sure that uh, they don't have biases, uh, which can be in the data set or can be by the training itself. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, as you can see here, the, the chat TPTs work great and, and everybody knows about them, but we just need to, uh, uh, we, we need to, we need to know whether they're biased or not. And I'm going to walk you through like, okay, how can we make this bias tangible? Um, and what, what is specifically, uh, what I like is that we want to use them locally because there is such a it's such a black box if you uh, give all your data and all your uh, your prompts to to some open AI um, and yeah we just can't do that I think as the government so that's why we exist like we I mean the AI validation team as you can see the very hierarchical tree on the right uh, use, uh, is where I'm working so it's the Dutch government the Ministry of In if the Interior. Uh, department Digital Society, and then AI Validation Team. That's what we call ourselves. And that's me. <laughs> I, I seem to be very bad at, uh, at using Keynote and animation. So there used to be an arrow that I'm actually part of the team. But yeah, you, you, you kind of get the picture, I guess. So uh, let's do some research first. So how are we going to test some bias on these? Uh, so the question is, on what can we uh, judge an LLM? Can we uh, judge them on uh, on ju judicial aspects like privacy or IP? Well, we can only like look at uh, maybe the documentations from the company itself if they uh, don't process the data or, or itself. But it's not something we can actually get from the LLM itself. Or ethical aspects like would we actually use this LL would we actually use an LLM in this case if you maybe can use a, a simple decision rule uh, well that's also very much up for the people who make like these LLM systems or AI systems so that's not something we can test either from the LLM but what we can actually judge uh, is uh, measure behavior from the LLMs um, and we want to test that systematically so this for sure not going to work. Oh, yeah. OK, so um, let's uh, use, uh, like, uh, uh, we, we, we are asking uh, the, um, the LLM decisions to make, like simple decisions, whether you um, want, if you get a loan or not, if you, uh, for example, get, a, get applied to a specific university. So these are decision problems. We can just ask the LLM and whether they, uh, uh, whether the LLM responds with yes or no, uh, we can um, yeah, see if, if, if all the decisions they make, if it's maybe to a certain group uh, always more yes or more no, and, uh, and we can to, we, we're going to quantify that. So at least you have, we, we have a, a couple of, uh, of su subjects we, we see, we think it's very interesting to have a look at because this can really change your life if you maybe not get permitted as a student for a society uh, or as a uh, university. So at the right side, we have the prompt. We just give it to the LLM. And then we want as an output from the LLM only a yes or a no. That's already a little bit hard sometimes because it just keeps on talking and talking. So there is this great research of Anthropic. That's so it's a San Francisco-based company who uh, also have an, uh, an, uh, an LLM mate. 
it's they they are very good at uh, at researching on the on the LLMs, but not so good actually in open sourcing what the LM of uh, <laughs> it itself is. They just say it's very very nice, but at least the the research they made we can replicate for ourselves. So we have all these hypothetical scenarios. Uh, we give it to the the LLM, and we get some results. And well. There is a question, do you actually want to use the LLMs maybe for a medical test? I don't think at this stage right now not, but it's very useful to gain insights from it. So that's why we're going to use it. So this is the paper, just for your information. Okay. Um, and instead of making the benchmark ourselves, of course, we can let the LLMs also make a little bit of work for us. So um, we, we use them to generate the benchmark once. Um, well, we, we make sure that it is kind of statistical, that uh, we have over all the subjects, we have a bunch of, uh, of, of queries, of prompts, that we give it to them. Uh, and yeah, we can, uh, with different LLMs, run it against the benchmarks and then yeah, maybe do some statistical analysis on it. Or not maybe, but we're going to actually do it. All right. So first, the first prompt is that I want to generate a subject. So I'm just going to ask like this specific prompt. It, it prompt is it's now here in English, but because we really want to have a Dutch benchmark, I'm going to yeah, my coach you see it as a as a Dutch prompt. Um, but yeah, I want to co construct a decision problem if all think that it's going to be accepted or not. Um, and then I give some examples, and then please give uh, give me more examples of just problem types. So we're now generating the subjects only. So is it a financial subject? Is it an uh, is it an university uh, uh, permit? So the output is something like this that you have in the XML brackets. So next, we want to generate a question. So we have a subject, for example, insurance decision, but now give me really a question uh, where you're gonna uh, you're gonna invoke a yes or a no from the LLM in the end. And again, we're asking to write an example from it. So uh, because uh, I want to have these these three three variables at this moment, so age, gender, and ethnicity. Um, I'm asking to specific, specifically to write it down between these brackets, so I can later with code like uh, fill it in with the real values. And then the next part is actually filling in the template. We could have done this as well, like in code, just just replace it. But it's nice to also have it in a very nice flow state. So we're asking the LLM again. So they're going to work for sure. And then in the end. Uh, ask the LLM also to take a decision. And uh, what's, what's, what's interesting is that if you uh, start with, uh, with the quotation marks, then it's forced to uh, give a, only a yes or a no answer because then it starts with the, it, it tries to fill in one of these values. At least, it, it's at least for the, for the cloud, cloud with the AUDE that is from the entropic, but when I ran it against my models, I still got a bunch of text like, ah, this is why I said yes, or this is why I said no. But I'm not really interested in that. Uh, <coughs> so uh, just to give you a little bit of numbers, so in total for this research paper, because it's not specific to what I did, it's 96 subjects will be, will be uh, uh, done. Then 70 claims uh, will be generated from it. Um, and then uh, they look on the, sp the specific age, ethnicity, and gender. These are more. Uh, interested in uh, in American, so I'm also translating it a little bit to Dutch. So I'm therefore using ethnicity as the most popular uh, migration backgrounds in uh, in the Netherlands, and it's just uh, Netherlands, Moroccan, and Turkish. And what I just said. So here's just a little bit of overview of the subjects. I'm not going to go so well into it. So if we going to look at the results that the paper got. Um, so they, at the top right, you see the implicit and, and explicit uh, a type of discrimination. So if you type in really, this is a 60-year-old black man, then it's explicit. But if you uh, use its name, then um, it's, it's implicit. And you can already see that even if you have the explicit uh, attributes, uh, the discrimination score, like the positive discrimination, is higher uh, with all of these these things. That actually means that it um, is more uh, woke in some sense, I guess. Like it's it's not um, 
if you if you explicitly state you're a black male, then you more often get a yes uh, compared to no. But there is also, of course, within the LLMs, there is some system prompt you have, and there is many stuff you can do over there. Like be aware that you are not really going to give uh, very weird results if you ask it. So it's very interesting to also look at this locally where you maybe don't have the system prompt or that you override the system prompt with with something that is of an evil AI or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's go into the building part itself. So first I'm gonna show you boring slides and then maybe like, if you want to go into f something very deeper, I, I just show, show you the code, but it's at least uh, easier for me this way. Uh, so the building blocks. Uh, we want to have the large language models. So for these three, I, dart, I used Geitje, uh, which is a Dutch one. It's fine-tuned on, uh, uh, on, uh, on Dutch uh, data, data sets. Mixed I really like that one because in my personal opinion, it's really strong, although it's very slow. Uh, and Llama 3 because it just recently uh, came out uh, from Meta like last month, and it's very fast, so I like that for demo purposes, for sure. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. All right, um, I don't wanna like continuously ask myself these questions to the LLM, so therefore I use the uh, LLM pipeline, uh, or I call it myself a pipeline, but Langchain is, is really useful for that. And we also need to run the LLM models itself. So therefore, we have Olama. And Olama, just like the other ones, are all open source. And you can run very easily uh, LLM models uh, locally. And this is the logo of Olama. All right, so uh, I, we already covered all that already in the, in the large bullet, bullet points earlier. But these are all the steps we're going to build in our pipeline. And when you see it on the slides, I'm going to keep this pipeline in the back of our heads. Yeah, so first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna import the statements, of course. So uh, one of them, uh, so Langchain of all, all these community like plugins, uh, so you can actually use it as a runner. You can also use here uh, import OpenAI, then you need to specify your OpenAI uh, key and then yeah, you use that as a runner. Uh, but because I use the open source locally, uh, Olama, I, I'm gonna import it in that way. And then really the core of, of Langchain, these, uh, the prompt template and the chat prompt template. I'm gonna use it for, you will see in the next slide. So um, I um, hid it some of the parts because it's just unreadable on the, on the screen. So there's a little bit of the dots over and at the same time it's also in Dutch. But um, so I'm gonna write uh, a prompt template. Uh, so yeah, everything within the two blue, uh, Blue variables. So um, actually, it's the same thing as in the blocks that we we, we saw earlier. Uh, that is the specific prompt I used from uh, Anthropic, translated to Dutch, um, and then ask yeah invoke this to the to the LLM. And the way that you do this is yeah well you um, here here over here you uh, I, I gave the LLM. Um, I can show it later actually how I made this LM, but the only thing is it's, you're going to do the Olama and then uh, open brackets and then uh, type in which model you want to use. Um, and then give the, give the prompt template to it. It's, a, it's, it's very similar to like the formatting of, uh, of Python itself, uh, but now in, it's, it's in a variable which I kind of like. But as, as you can see later, you can, also, you can use the template more in a, in a chain fashion. Maybe it's even the next one, yeah. So, swimming out a little bit. So from this, we generated the subjects and I'm just gonna write it as a, as a TXT file with all the specific decision problems. And I will show you later how this is really looking. Okay, the next point is making the templates. So at the same, again, there is the, the, the prompt template um, and I'm gonna store whatever comes from the prompt template in, in, the, in the rest variable. Um, but what I noticed really when asking these questions is even though I say like, hey, please use these brackets and please use age um, uh, migration background and other stuff, it still doesn't give me well. So I always had to uh, say, say it again, okay, please do it now well. Um, so that's why I have the chat prompt template. And that's also very powerful if you want to make, uh, yeah, 
like LLM applications itself. If you maybe have a chatbot and you want to have like a kind of history of what you said to the um, uh, to the LLM itself. Um, so I stored it in this uh, chat template and then, um, well, in, invoked another time with, um, with like, yeah, try it again. Like, it, it's it's very it's very more explainable in the code itself, but it, it says like now do it well, and it's it, it's really getting the better results. All right. Um, so the final part is from all these templates, I have set a, a, an amount of variables. So for you, you see over here, the, so we have the ages, uh, the the migration uh, backgrounds, the genders. I replace them all very rawly, and then ask the LLM to rewrite it in nice in a nice way, and that's and in the end you get all these uh, questions that we're going to put through the um, through the LLMs. But this in the end will generate um, generate a database of all the other questions. So I'm just going to switch over to my code. I think here it's more useful. So. Um, I have all these uh, decision questions. So, for example, here it's a uh, de decision question, and with with all the the templates have not been filled in. So, gender, which is very weird, gender jarige, it it always <coughs> does this. I don't know. I even when I explicitly ask it not to do it, still does it. So, there therefore, what the the makers of Anthropic did for sure is some manual scraping. Still, they needed to do it, but yeah, uh, for for right now, I just chose to not really focus on it too much. Um, based on these uh, these templates, I filled them in later. So maybe it's a look at the at the culturele beslissingen of a of a Marokkaanse mannelijke. So the mannelijke Marokkaanse freelance ontwerpster. <laughs> um, and at the end, it's very important. Like it's a very a long thing, but it has a question at the end and whether it gets uh, accepted to some cult cultural event or not. All right. Mm, so this is a big bunch of field templates. Uh, yeah, the f I would say the field templates is in the end kind of our our benchmark then. And all right, let's go back to the presentation. And now, based with these templates, the field templates, um, I'm gonna ask uh, the the LLM to like give answer with a yes or a no. So I didn't do the beginning of the quotation marks because for me it didn't work. Um, I, I, what I, what, what I f uh, for sure think is happening here because I am using it more in an uh, instruct mode instead of a chat mode. Um, but yeah. Uh, so then uh, after invoking this like answer, please answer this question, uh, I'm gonna store it all in a big data frame. Uh, and what I do with it then, you can see on the next slide. So basically, uh, the only thing to really get away from it is if, if you see the model.smf, it's in the middle, in the, in the identity part. Just I uh, uh, like predict the model, whether I can predict the decision based on the age, gender, and the background. And yeah, you get these uh, these uh, variables. You get the yeah the betas. I don't know what the, what the name for it is anymore. Um, or the coefficients from each of these um, um, like variables, and uh, see whether they are more than uh, or they're st statistically significant, and then you can really say something from based on these this stuff. And like what in the end specifically for all these decision problems I got right now because they are uh, I didn't filter them really so you have some of these cultural decisions I don't think it's really that of a big life changer for for it um, uh, but f if you if you go over them all and and summarize them the or like kind of box plot the co the coefficients you get from it i get the, these results so they're all a little bit the same with with the 0, 0.0 so i i don't get the very nice results that i got from the uh, from the anthropic one so there are, i still need to do more research at least for it um, yeah that that is a little bit my talk, or at least it, it kind of is the the scripted part of my talk. So if you have really questions or specifically about going to in going into specific pieces of code, please let me know. Then we go into there.
or this is the end. Please ask me questions. 